Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at the Box Cox transformation. So let's uh, jump right in. The, we're in. This is the setting. We have a, a linear equation y equals x beta plus error and we're going to assume that the errors are multivariate normal with zero and uh, covariance matrix sigma squared i. Now we're going to consider transformations of the form y lambda where lambda is estimated from the data. So these are, uh, this lambda is the Box-Cox transformation. And we will show that the maximum likelihood estimator of lambda is equivalent to a simple least squares procedure. Okay. So first let's follow, let's, let's consider the following models. So yi raised to the lambda, you know, the Box-Cox transformation is equal to this. So what we do is we want to find the lambda that minimizes this sum of squared error. That's the goal in this, with this model. Now let's look at another model. Let's subtract 1 and divide by uh, lambda. So it kind of standardizes it. And then we assume it you know, has a linear model like this. And then we want to find the lambda that minimizes the sum of squared error in this model. Okay. And now let's look at a third model. So, and so we go from here to here where we divide by the um, geometric mean raised to the lambda minus 1. Okay. And so we divide it here, and we divide it here, and we divide it here. And I left it in. Normally I'd put like a beta double star, like I did the epsilon, but I left it here to emphasize what's really going on. And when we when we find the maximum likelihood estimator of lambda, then this step makes more sense. So find the lambda that minimizes the sum of squared error for this model. And note that the sum of squared error is, is, is this. So we take our y minus the model fit, right? Where, of course, uh, y tilde is the geometric mean. So this is the sum of squared error for this model. And then, you know, now we, we may take partial derivatives of beta and, and, and lambda, and, you know, we, we have to maximize that, or minimize it, I should say. And that's the goal. So these three models are very similar. But the, the big note is that the same lambda minimizes all three equations. These are monotonic transformations, monotone transformations. And so it doesn't affect the lambda that, that minimizes the sum of squared errors in each one of these cases. So one, you know, one approach is to pick a lambda value or a range of lambda values to hone in on the lambda that minimizes the sum of squared errors. So pick 2 and minus 2, 1 and minus 1, values close to 0. Um, you know, and, and, then, and then you can plot this sum of squared error, actually goes like this, and find the lambda that makes it smallest. That's one approach. And, and actually that's pretty common to do. Um, one note though is that when lambda is 0, you know, we're dividing by zero, right? So what we do, so, so there's not a hole in the function. You know, we keep it continuous. We set it equal to uh, log of y. And we get log of y because the limit as lambda approaches zero of this transformation is the log of y. And why not? prove that. So a, a quick Taylor expansion of this function, uh, y to the lambda, um, is this. So this is the, the I guess it would be a McLaurin uh, expansion because we're, we're centered about zero or expanding around zero. So this is one. You just plug in what you know. And then if you subtract one and then divide everything by lambda, you know, we get this. Now, on this side, as lambda goes to zero, all these terms drop out because that lambda goes to zero and all we're left with the log of i. So as lambda goes to zero, the result follows. So now let's look at the MLE approach for finding lambda. Okay. So 
the our density for y is multivariate normal with mean x beta and variance covariance matrix sigma squared i. So the density looks like this. This is the standard multivariate normal, right? The mean is x beta, so, you know, y minus the mean. Um, now this is the vector product. We could write that in as the sum of the components. But now let's do a transformation. Let's let zi equal this transformation. Now the Jacobian is this, so you know, it's just a diagonal matrix of yi lambda i, which the, then you have to take the determinant, so it's the product of all that. Now if we multiply by n and divide by n here, the divide by n you can take into this and call it y tilde, you know, raised to the n minus lambda, where y tilde is the geometric mean. Okay, so then the density of z, right, so we're now we're going to keep it in terms of y. So we just plug in z here, but really it's this, right? And the Jacobian is this. So this is a function in terms of y. So if we wanted it in terms of z, then you'd have to back solve this for y and plug it in. And then the Jacobian, you'd have to take the inverse of that and then um, pl and then plug in what you back solve for y into here and then then it would be in terms of z but we're keeping it in terms of y because you know that's the data we're working with is the y values okay so this is the the density of this in terms of y now let's look at the log likelihood so we take the log of this and you know that's pretty straightforward there there e goes away and we're left with this now I write that as a sum um, plus and then this over here we multiply by two divide by two and that's where those twos come into play and I, and I want this n over n divided by two because it's sort of it's common everywhere and it's we're going to factor it out makes it easier so now let's take the partial derivative with respect to sigma. That goes away. That's this. Here we get plus 1 over 2 sigma the fourth, you know, times this. Um, no sigma there, so it goes away. Set it equal to 0. Solve for sigma squared, and we get this. Now, let's look at the likelihood of lambda with sigma squared, the maximum likelihood estimate of sigma squared and um, beta, you know, plugged in, okay? So here is our log likelihood, and we're going to assume we have the maximum likelihood as sigma squared, which we just solved for. We're going to assume that we have the maximum likelihood of, of beta, so we'd have to take the partial derivatives with respect to beta, find it, plug it in. So now, um, let's plug it in. This is this piece. Here we, we're plugging in the maximum likelihood estimate. Now when we plug in the maximum likelihood estimate of sigma squared here, right, those cancel and the n sticks around so it's we get this minus n over 2 and then there's no sigma squared here so it stays the same. Now we factor out an n minus 2 everywhere and we get this. And now Ultimately, we want to maximize this in terms of, of lambda, so we'll take the partial derivative of lambda, or, you know, that's the standard approach. And But whenever there's constants, that doesn't factor into maximizing it. You know, it just kind of raises it or lowers it, but the, the value that maximizes this is still the same. So what I want to do is get rid of the constants and just say it's proportional to what's left over. So we have this. Um, here we're going to, since it's a difference of log, we're going to write it as a separate. Now, let's take in this geometric mean into this sum here. So that's what we do here. So if, um, so the geometric mean is here and here. So if we were to factor it out and then it's divided by, that's what this is. So we've taken it into this sum, all right? And this right here, we just generically call sigma squared hat, but it's, it's still a function of lambda, right? We still have to maximize this. 
So if we wanted to maximize this, we have to minimize this value. But this is exactly um, the sum of squared error in model three. So I'm gonna flash back here. So here's model three. We find lambdas that minimize the sum of squared errors, which is this. But that that's the same thing here, right? They're equivalent. So so finding the maximum likelihood estimator lambda is the same as minimizing the sum squared error in that model three option. And so that's what's commonly done. You don't need special software to find the maximum likelihood estimator of lambda or you know the box Cox transformation. Um, you just pick different values of lambda and find the one that minimizes the sum of squared error in that model three. And that's pretty cool. So it makes it easy. Anyone with software that can fit a linear regression model can find the maximum likelihood of the box Cox transformation. Okay, but what now let's find a confidence interval for that maximum likelihood estimate of lambda. And before we start, there's a note that hypothesis testing and confidence intervals have a one to one relationship, right? So in hypothesis testing, the non rejection region is would be the same as a confidence interval, you know, using the same alpha. So let's set up first, let's set up a hypothesis test. So let's let lambda equal some value versus not that value. And the likelihood ratio test is here. And then if we log it and minus two, then this is asymptotically chi squared with one degree of freedom, because that's the you know the difference in parameters there. So the rejection region would be this test statistic greater than that cutoff value, chi squared with one degree of freedom. Well, let's plug in what we know. So there's the minus two, and the log of it, we take the difference, and, and that's greater than this. So this is the rejection region. So now let's plug in these values. Remember the log likelihood evaluated at lambda was this. That's from, right, so that's from up here. So it's this. And then, so if we divide by uh, minus two, so that's what this is, um, and we added this to the other side, and then we plug it in, that's what this is. So it's the maximum I could estimate. So any values, lambda, you know, not, or, you know, that would are greater than this, are in the rejection region. So the values that don't satisfy this would be in the confidence, you know, the non-rejection or a confidence interval. So this is what we what I just said. We find the maximum likelihood, and we have plotted this for various values. You know, plotted this. That's the uh, likelihood. You know, in terms of lambda, and then that value, and then what we do is is we go down one half chi squared with one degree of freedom. So we go down and then see where it crosses you know, the likelihood. And then that's where the confidence interval is for the maximum likelihood estimator of lambda. So this is a confidence interval. And so now what we do is um, to find the maximum likelihood estimate or the box Cox transformation, what we do is we pick a lambda in here that makes sense. Usually we don't use the maximum likelihood estimator. I, you know, I guess sometimes you do. But you know, if this interval contains zero, we may use a log transformation. Or if the interval contains one half, then we would use the square root transformation on y. Yep. Well, that's all I have for the box cost transformation. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.